There's some really, really, really scary stuff going on in the auto industry that most of you probably don't know. One of the biggest issues that all of us are going to be facing is will we be forced to drive an electric vehicle? We're going to dive right into it. Look, I don't want to talk. How you try and press the kid and really you was soft. All you know is All right, guys, welcome back to yet another episode of Let's Test Podcast. And uh, like the intro says, the title says, we are talking about electric vehicles in America right now. There's some really, really scary stuff that I don't think the average person really is paying attention to that w I feel like is kind of being slipped over everybody's eyes right now um, when it comes to governmental decisions. So stick around until the middle of this podcast to hear some super, super alarming facts that are happening in America right now that most of you do not know. Going back to the pod. So... I'm going to jump in real quick. Okay. If you guys are liking this new content that we're doing, um, subscribe, share it, um, tell a friend about it, whatever. But uh, follow us on the social medias. Uh, we appreciate the support. There's a lot of people listening and commenting on the last one. And uh, we're just trying to do something different and a little more exciting for this summer. And, uh, yeah, we appreciate every single one of you guys. So I'll let Brent jump right back into it, and uh, we'll start diving in. Yep. So – there are, so let me just set up for those of you who don't know the, the landscape right now, the whole electric vehicle thing. Um, this podcast is for a lot of people, whether you're on either side of the aisle, whether you're in favor of EVs, whether you're in favor of, of uh, electric or gas powered things, both of you will get value out of this, um, both sides. And what I want to say is this. So electric, as most people know, is starting to come more and more and more. Uh, Tesla kind of started it, and now we have all these manufacturers trying to jump in. Um, until about the first quarter of this year, manufacturers, all of them, um, they're kind of weary because it's such a big investment, but they were pretty um, excited for it, and they thought it was going to be the future. And what you're seeing right now is sales of EVs are dropping right now, and the government is now pushing a lot of basically laws on these manufacturers to sell EVs and certain numbers of EVs that I'll cover in a second. But, and I'm not just making this up. I, I was just reading this. The EV share of total new vehicle sales in quarter one was 7.3%. So think about that. 93% weren't EVs. And that was a decrease from quarter four. That was from Cox Automotive, which is a very reputable thing. Um, and then Another one, the New York Times says more competition and flagging demand for electric vehicles um, has led to declining sales at Tesla. As sales of Tesla's dropped, demand for electric vehicles cool. So you're kind of seeing it's a whole, the infrastructure isn't there yet. Um, the technology isn't where people need it to be. And they're being pushed EVs everywhere. So you're seeing these first time, you know, early adopters of EVs are trading those in, uh, values on those trade-ins are very, very low because nobody wants them. There's a, the market's flooded with, you know, very low miles EVs all over auction. And people are having really bad experiences with them when it comes to reliability, when it comes to longevity, and when it comes to just daily use of having an EV. And what I mean by that is it's the charging. Yeah. It's the getting it worked on. It's the unknowns of everything. And in certain places in America, like California, you know, in the news, I don't think it's as big of a deal as they make it sound. But with they had a couple brownouts, which means they don't have any power. And it's kind of hard to charge your electric car that needs power. Yeah. Um, and then what I'll say on, on kind of our side of things, at this point, it's just completely unfunctional for... Um, being in the mountains and pulling big trailers and stuff like that. Our last podcast was talking about diesel trucks, which yeah. is kind of what's more functional for us. And we were talking yesterday. I don't want to hog the whole podcast, but we were talking yesterday. I'm not really against EVs personally. I'm just, I just want stuff that works. If, if an EV made sense and there was a thousand mile range on it or 700 mile range, you could charge it as fast as you could fill a gas tank. It would pull it was reliable in the cold weather. Um, I'd, I'd be in if it was affordable. But the problem is, is we're not there yet. Yeah, I think it's got to be like a direct replacement for what we already have, right? Right. You can't push something, and that's what they're doing is they're pushing it on us, and they're starting to shove it down our throats 
like legislatively, and that's what you're going to get into is they're legislatively want to shove this down our throats. So knowing that, you know, that's where everybody starts pushing back and there's a lot of kickback as there should be because they shouldn't be pushing something down our throat that is not ready for the consumer. And I think that's what we see, especially here where, where we're at and with what we do is they don't make a product that can even do what we need it to, let alone like, I don't even know if an electric vehicle not pulling a trailer could go the range that we need no. to day to day in the cold weather that we have, you know? So, and that's what we talk about. Like if you lived in Denver, you had a 15 minute commute, your job had a, you know, say a Tesla, it had Tesla chargers, you have one at your house, like then it makes sense. But the problem is, is mo well, a lot of America is not like that. No, no. It's, it's not metro areas. Exactly. And I mean, a lot of people, like for our instance, like especially our, our group here listening, a lot of it is a big snowmobile base. And I personally take off in the morning into a storm to go ride in the in the storm when the snow's good. So you're heading into the worst of the weather with a vehicle that's unreliable and uh, not capable of doing what you need. So right now it just doesn't fit what we can do at all. Now, I agree with you on the standpoint of I've like the electric is cool. Like they're, yeah, they're, is, they're fun to drive. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, they're fast. The torque is right there. Um, you know, they're a little heavy, but they're working on light lightning batteries up and stuff. So there is potential for it to be pretty awesome. Now I'll always love the smell of a two stroke and love the, you know, the rumble, the feel of an actual conventional engine, but, but Dodge is solving that. <laughs> yeah yeah you can have exhaust sounds come yeah. out of your vehicle they're literally making that i just saw it, that yeah. dodge is coming out with a car that makes engine sounds but it's fully electric uh yeah you i will not drive one of those yeah. that seems ridiculous but, but no it's it's an exciting thing and it is really cool like i personally am huge on like uh, milwaukee power tools and seeing how far they have came in the last five years like it's incredible where the technology has went but for our way of life and what like for the majority of the US population and probably probably the world, like it's just not a reliable or functional source in any way. That's gonna be for a whole nother podcast. But yeah, let's dive into, you know, what they're what they what are they forcing onto you yeah. as you know, the car world. Yeah. So let's <laughs> this is something that you guys should seriously think about and this is my opinion on it. Whether you love EVs and you think that everyone should drive an EV um, or you are totally against EVs and you think they're the stupidest thing in the world, um, I, I think the common ground should be we should have that choice. That is my opinion. We, Whether you, you're a Tesla fan or a diesel truck fan, you should have that choice. And the consumer should be what sets the market, not third-party sources as in the government. So I'm going to jump right into this. And, and you guys should seriously think about this because if this happens, it is a domino effect of bad things for the consumer, whether you're maybe if you love EVs, it's not terrible. But if you are a gas lover like most people are, the, well, as 93% of the market is at this point, this is bad, bad news for you. Well, I, I think if you are an EV lover and you do like you support it fully, it is going to be bad for you because our infrastructure is not ready for that yet. Yeah. And they're forcing it now. Like they, they want it now and yeah. our infrastructure is not ready. So we, we are not ready for the world to go or the U S to go to go to that yet. Yeah. So, uh, here's, here's the cold, hard truth of what's going on. And I cannot believe this is, I'm pretty in tune with the news, especially on the automotive side and stuff like that. Consumers are not talking about this at all. And I don't know if no one's put it out because they're being paid off or whatever. Uh, it's like I mentioned in the beginning of the podcast. I feel like they're trying to pull the wool over our eyes, so to speak. But it's this. States that have agreed to adopt California emissions, which most of the people in Colorado think it's just us in Colorado. I think it's 17 other states. So it's California and 17 other states, I believe, which is a good portion of America and you watch more and more people are going to follow or more and more states are going to follow suit there. But if they have California emissions requirements by 2026 or at the start of 2026, these manufacturers, and it doesn't matter if it's Subaru, 
Dodge, GM, Ford, anything, okay, Hyundai, whatever, in Colorado or in these states that are participating in those emissions, yeah, they will have to sell 35% or 33% EVs, gas to EV. So what that means is you're like, okay, well, maybe that's achievable. Uh, It's really not at this point because as we just, as I read you that quote, there's only 7% of the market right now that is EVs, and that is dropping. It dropped from the last quarter, and it's been dropping for a full year. So 7 is a long way from 33%. But what that means to these manufacturers is for every two gas cars that they sell, they will have to sell an EV. And what that means is is if they don't, they are going, the government can fine that manufacturer up to $22,000 a car past the 35%. So that, it, it, sit there and like chew on that for a second. That is really scary because what that's going to do is one of two things. One, all these car manufacturers at this point, unless something happens in the EV world that is completely revolutionary, which it's been going on for a while and nothing has been. Um, they're getting better, but they're not there yet. And so think about this. Either A, the people who want to buy gas engines, their MSRP, their price is going to go up 22 grand a car because these manufacturers are going to have to offset it somehow. Or these manufacturers are going to face bankruptcy. And if you think about that, that is really, really scary because there are hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people, I would guess even maybe a million or a couple million people that work in the auto industry in some manner, whether they're, you know, uh, salespeople or, um, you know, sales reps for the manufacturers or factory workers or, you know, CEOs or whatever. There's a ton of those people that you don't even realize have jobs through automotive industry. They're going to go bye-bye. If that happens, if they don't up the price on gas. And so like we're seeing right now, there's 70 in Colorado, there's $7,500 tax credits um, on EVs and they still can't move them. Yeah. And so now Ford has gone in and like a couple months ago and they're starting to lower their MSRP of everything. That's, well, and that are EVs. Great interest rates in these times. Yeah. Too. Great yeah. rebates and they still can't move them. So I don't know if I gave this point justice by explaining it, but when I heard it, it was like, dang, that sucks. But really think about that. Like that is a huge deal because you might be forced to drive an EV when it comes to your financial situation and when it comes to your government situation. They're going to find ways to make your butt sit in the seat of an EV and not use your AC because you can't get from one destination to another without charging it. So it, the, to me, it's this is really scary that the government has this much power and it's even stupider that the public is going on with this. Well, and the public doesn't know it's happening. That's what's even no, more concerning. really right? scary. Public doesn't know. And then like... Me as just a consumer, right? Like I'm removed from the car world. You're in the car world every day. It terrifies me that I'm already paying a premium for vehicles. Trucks are a hundred grand. Yeah, like yeah, trucks a hundred thousand dollars, and you're telling me it's gonna be another twenty two thousand dollars. I think that's a possibility. Like that's terrifying. Yeah. All of a sudden, like you can't even afford a conventional, um, you know, vehicle anymore. Like that's just ridiculous. Yeah. Like think about it. Your thirty thousand dollar car, like. Say an Equinox from Chevrolet is going to be fifty two thousand dollars. Yeah, that's because ridiculous. it's gas. It's like no one's going to be able to afford that. They can't even afford the thirty that it is now. Exactly. And so, and then there's going to be no, you know, promo rates because they're going to have to incentivize the EVs to try to get that ratio. It's going to be a mess. And the thing that worries me is there again. This is not an open market where the you know if there was a ton of EV enthusiasts out there then by all means the manufacturers should pump more evs out and you know those people can be happy and feel like they're saving the planet and we can get into another podcast of what it actually does to the earth to farm the metals for those batteries um 
but really I'm, I'm not super against the EV. Like, like we were talking about, it's cool, it, but it just doesn't make sense right now. And the fact, again, going back to this, the fact that these government representatives that we, well, not me, but <laughs> the general population <laughs> is electing to make these rules you might want to really think about who's in office because whether you're an EV guy or a diesel guy, I really think that we live in America and you want the freedom to choose things. That's what makes this country so great. We're not forced to do much in America like other countries are. And I do not want to see this be another way that people are forced to do something that just doesn't make sense. I agree. Um, this might be a question I don't know if you know the answer to, but you say that you're going to have to sell one EV to two um, conventional engines. Mm -hmm. Is that just, are the, is the government just pushing that on new vehicles or is that going to be on used vehicles as well? Now it's, it's just new. It's just new. Okay. So, um, but, but then again, it's going to affect the used vehicles. Oh yeah. Because no, absolutely. think about it. They're, they're going to be, the newer ones are going to be more expensive and more yep. scarce. And just like COVID, your used truck that used to be 30 grand is now 45. Exactly. And people are like, what the heck? I can't afford that. I'm going to yep. have to get a truck with 500,000 miles. It's like, yeah, try getting the bank to loan you money on that. Yeah, it's impossible. Yeah. And it's, it's so, a mess. And the yeah. other thing too, that these manufacturers are starting to kind of, I don't know if you guys have seen the Ford commercials on TV. It used to be electric and gas. They're really now starting to push hybrid and hybrid can make a lot more sense to most people in, in their situation. But the problem is hybrid doesn't count for these ratios. It's only it's pure EV at this point of shooting this podcast. So I guess we'll see what happens. Hopefully this gets overturned. I mean, you're seeing a lot of the, the green energy have to take a backseat. There were just one in Wyoming. They're going to close a plant. And uh, they actually had to cut back a, a coal plant, I think, it, or maybe it was a nuclear plant. They had to cut back on the green and boost the the fossil fuel side of things because it, it they can't do that it's not with the grid that America has right now. Like we're trying to think about everything that takes power. I mean, we have 50 things in here right now alone that are pulling power out of this yeah. thing. And then EVs is, that's a lot of, a lot of electricity. So yeah. I guess we'll see what happens. I think you guys should be aware of that. I think this is a podcast that, um, is kind of most people don't know this stuff, but you you guys definitely should, and you should do what you can, push back when you can, because there again, if you love EVs or hate them, we should have a choice in America. That's my opinion. I couldn't agree more, and uh, thank you for sharing this with us. And I think, yeah, the general general population needs to know this, and we need to be aware of it and think about it as we move forward. So we will uh, continue on to the next and see you guys next week. Yeah, thanks guys for watching. See ya.